There are countless astonishing ruins upon the islands of Malta, many of which we have covered in the past, some in particular being of such an advanced nature that many a dedicated researcher has come away from said sites with a strong suspicion and awareness of stolen evidence, suggesting to them that whoever built these buildings must have had some form of assistance from someone or something with a far greater intellect than that of ancient or even modern man. One in particular, a structure with such mystifying properties, we have now covered it on two occasions here on our channel. However, upon the lesser-known Maltese island of Gozo stands the oldest yet no less astounding ruin of Malta, known as Gigantia. Thought to mean giant's tower, it is a megalithic temple complex of tremendous antiquity, with many concluding that it far predates even that of the Great Pyramid complex of Giza. A group of Neolithic stones still left in formation, which continue to give modern man a small glimpse into the astonishing past abilities of its builders. Thanks to the moderate, long-lasting temperate climes of the Mediterranean, Gigantia's megaliths still stand, giving us a chance to explore this remarkable site. And what must be considered the most intriguing factor surrounding its construction is the ancient folklore that can still be found swirling within the minds of the local Goatsians. This legend tells of an ancient giant, a female, who long after her supposed demise continued to be worshipped here, with many of the temple's elements now recognized as ceremonial sites, specifically oriented around the rites of female fertility. This folklore has also been intriguingly corroborated by a number of astute, honest researchers who have, over the years, successfully unearthed numerous figurines and statues at sight, specifically associated with this ancient cult. According to local Gozitan folklore, a giantess who ate nothing but bread, beans, and honey once bore a child here, from a man selected from the common people. And with the child hanging from her shoulder, she built these temples to not only use as her abode, but to later be used as her burial location, and thus a place of worship. Yet according to academia, who disregard such legends as having any historical accuracy, still concede that the effort to create such a site was undeniably a remarkable feat, especially when one considers that these monuments were constructed at a time even before the wheel had been introduced and indeed predates the invention of metal tools. However, as they so fervently deny the possibility of past ancient giants, we feel they should consider the most remarkable characteristics of Gigantia being the scale of its still existing yet highly eroded megalithic blocks, with some still in situ, weighing far in excess of 10 tons, somehow transported from a faraway location and placed within the temple walls with such ease and skill that to deny the fact that even if not the work of an ancient giant, but the accomplishments of a past civilization, that they were clearly far greater than those currently claimed within the history books, and to deny such reality to us is a sign of negligence in their responsibility to convey to a learning population the truth of world history. Who built Gigantia? How did they build it with such enormous stones and with such an awareness of cardinal orientations? Was it, as the legend states, once built single-handedly by an ancient female giant? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. Homes, towns, religious structures, an entire living infrastructure of a once highly successful, highly capable people. Managing to expertly fuse their existence harmoniously with the surrounding environment, creating structures which left little, if any, impact on the surrounding landscape, Structures still usable even to this day. Located within Abanque, a province in the region of Apurimac, Sehuite has been conveniently dated to the period of the Incan Empire, between the 15th and 16th centuries AD. However, like many sites dotted around Peru, and indeed the world, 
An explanation as to how these cultures achieve such wonders with such primitive access to construction or tools is not forthcoming. Compared to other Incan sites, Sehuite is also a complete ruin, leading the more observant, and indeed the free-thinking, self-funded geologist among us to suspect that it may actually be even older than the pre-Incas responsible for Machu Picchu. Yet the most noteworthy object at Sehuite, and the reason for our video, is its monolith. A mysterious boulder drenched in intricate, purposely placed carvings. Interestingly, the word Sehuite originated from the Quechua word Sehueta, which translates as place of orientation. The site is located on the top of a terraced hill. Dedicated research has also revealed that the site was once home to an enclosed sanctuary. Yet all that remains of this sanctuary today is a few leveled platforms and the monolith. It contains more than 200 geometric and zoomorphic figures, including reptiles, frogs, felines, topographical hydraulic models, complete with terraces, ponds, rivers, tunnels, and irrigation channels. The functions or purposes of the stone are not academically known, yet others suspect it was a map of the once existing complex created by a culture able of moving tremendous weights and carving stone with relative ease. Researcher Dr. Arlen Andrews Sr. believes the monolith was used as a scale model to design, develop, test and document the water flow for public water projects, and to teach ancient engineers and technicians the concepts and practices required. Quote, the rock was edited several times with new material, either altering the paths of the water or adding routes altogether. End quote. Clearly a remarkable artifact left by a remarkable civilization. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. Could there be an ancient pyramid still buried on Easter Island? Before its official discovery in the late 1700s, this speck of rock in the middle of an ocean was thought by many to have just been a legend. Shipwrecked souls lucky enough to make it there would live out the rest of their days on the island. Thus the island became inhabited by people from all over the globe. It had long been argued that Easter Island had only been inhabited for a few thousand years. However, certain talented people have discovered remarkable things beneath the ground which have suggested otherwise. Things which support native accounts of the island once having a vast history, telling of an ancient pyramid hidden near the island, with grid lines linking it to other significant ancient sites such as the pyramids in Giza, Stonehenge, and so on. The legend describes Easter Island as having once been part of a much larger country, Successive ice ages during the Pleistocene would lower sea levels by at least 100 meters and possibly far more, making Easter Island far larger than it is today. If ancient underwater ruins can be found surrounding Easter Island, it will confirm the existence of a lost advanced civilization, with activities possibly prior to the last ice age some 11,000 years ago. H.F. Blanford pointed out back in 1890, quote, There is clear proof that some land areas lying within continental limits had within a comparatively recent date been submerged over a thousand fathoms. What's more, there is strong evidence to suggest Easter Island's landmass has recently been submerged as well due to countless Moai statues found underwater around the island. End quote. Interestingly, Easter Island lies some 500 kilometers east of the crest of a submerged mountain range called the East Pacific Rise, and within is the so-called Easter Fracture Zone, with the island believed to be the summit of an immense mountain, created via volcanic activity, with the island itself also still displaying the top of a volcano. In addition to this main volcanic center, there are at least 17 older subsidiary eruptive centers with the oldest lava flows dated at up to 3 million years old. Could a large eruption have once sunk a majority of the Easter Island landmass? And if so, what ancient wonders are still hidden within this lost land? 
The more we learn in regards to its specific location, and indeed its secrets, the more important it seems to become. It is a place which we find highly compelling. Many things have happened to our planet during its long and arduous journey through the cosmos to where we find ourselves in the present. Many incredible and sometimes destructive events which we, as a species, are yet to unravel. Many of these mysterious events have thankfully left their marks upon the Earth in many ways, upon many of the oldest of artifacts and geology to be found on every continent. Clues left by these clearly cataclysmic events that many attribute to natural causes. However, there does exist many mysterious anomalies. Vitrified forts, melted stairways, deserts turned to glass, areas in remote places where events have occurred and can no longer sustain substantial life, leaving a landscape barren and scarred. Although we feel our next item of focus is probably one of the lesser mentioned of the anomalies, which shows a dramatic history here on our planet, but is probably one of the most compelling and little understood of them all. Known as the Devonian concretions, not much is understood regarding these mysterious cannonball-shaped stones, exhibiting a rusty patina. Many to speculate that they were once of a metallic composition. Often mistaken for fossil eggs, turtle shells, or bones, they are a very common geologic phenomenon in all types of sedimentary rock all over the Earth. We have covered a number of mysterious and as yet unexplained artifacts that were seemingly abandoned in many areas of the world around 300 to 350 million years ago. Interestingly, this is the dating given to the sudden arrival for many of these mysterious and often perfectly spherical so-called concretions. Did something happen at this time in history involving these fossilized, metallic, possible cannonballs? Many of the concretions that are found in the open on hard ground are more oval in shape, as if warped upon impact with the Earth. Yet the spheres that are found embedded within layers of soft sediments are more often than not perfectly spherical. The most perfectly preserved spheres are often those found within these softest sediments, most notably those found in Bosnia, Mexico, and Costa Rica, found in sandstone plateaus, including a few spectacularly intact specimens found in soft shale faults within Ohio, USA. How were these amazing spheres formed? If geological, then how did they form in so many different areas of Earth, in so many different types of sediment, solid rock, and on open ground, and show, in many cases, the appearance that they were actually once lodged where they are found, rather than to have grown there through unknown natural processes? We always find geologists and academics passionate denial of any other possibility than the predictably rigid supported limited list of universal possibilities, which will only ever accept natural processes, though, thankfully, many are beginning to consider a more logical reality surrounding many of these amazing artifacts. During excavations within the Kiziltipi district of southeastern Mardin in southeast Turkey, a marvelous, miraculous, and to this day unexplained artifact was discovered. A pure nugget of historical gold, ticking all the boxes of desirability when it comes to our research here at Mystery History. The wheel is by far the most important invention man has ever realized, and it is indeed recognized as such the world over. The official attested account for the origin of the wheel is given to the late aceramic Neolithic between 9500 to 6500 BCE, and could be seen in conjunction with other technological advances as that which gave rise to the early Bronze Age. The official kept academic record regarding the evolution of the wheel is largely accepted as follows. 4500 to 3300 BCE, Chalcolithic era, invention of the potter's wheel. 3300 to 2200 BCE, early Bronze Age. 2200 to 1550 BCE, Middle Bronze Age, 
invention of the spoked wheel and the chariot. When, on occasion, we are confronted with artifacts reluctantly accepted by these same academic fields of study as authentic, demonstrating through their existence that mainstream paradigm is to be vastly incorrect, we feel a mix of frustration and vindication. We also strongly feel that it is imperative we share such finds with one another to further all of our understandings regarding our past. To hopefully break the spell slowly cast over years of incorrect and largely incomplete information. According to the culture and tourism director of Marden, Davut Belikte, the car is like a copy of cars today. He also pointed out that the shape of this ancient toy resembles that of a tractor. Belikte revealed that strange toy dolls and whistles, also made of stone, were also found at the site. We believe that the whistles and dolls to be well over 5,000 to 6,000 years old, with the whistles still in working condition, he said. Along with these ancient figurines was also a mysterious stone tablet, inscribed with an ancient text. After extensive historical analysis, the writing on the 5 centimeter long stone was deemed to be that of an ancient title deed. The content of the deed refers to a fruit garden and the fruit trees within, which are to be split between the three sons of the owner. Clearly, the behavior of people far more advanced than that of Stone Age people, a premise we are expected to believe is accurate. Belikte has confirmed that comprehensive information on the two finds will be provided soon. Is this little ancient toy car perhaps the earliest evidence of the wheel we will ever find? Or is it just the tip of an evidential iceberg of a secret far larger.